all old men have is, you know, old stories. I love old stories. You you don't know me yet, but I am a big, uh, I'm obviously a big sports guy, but I am a maybe even bigger history storytelling guy. Okay. I love history. I love, I love hearing about good old days. Where do you want to start? Let's start at the beginning. Uh, I've got another screen, so every every now and then you'll see me look off. I'm I'm looking at it, but uh, from Panama City, Florida, is that right? That's correct. I'm an Air Force brat. Air Force brat. Okay. Yeah. Is, I was so the last you... baby. I was the last baby born at the original hospital at Tyndall. How about that? So did did you stay kind of there? Or did you move around a lot? Oh no, we moved. Uh, you know, we did. You know, the eighteen month deal. Uh, probably until I was uh, fourth, third or fourth grade. And then we moved back to Panama City. They okay. gave my dad, uh, he was a warrant officer, and they weren't going to promote him to a second lieutenant or demote him around the warrant officer rank. So buddy of his, who was the uh, top sergeant for the Air Force at that time, uh, Daddy took a flank up to New York or up Washington and uh, went in, locked the guy's office door. He said, what the hell are you doing? He said, I want a 22-month post, and I want you to lose my uh, all my information. He said, we can't do that. Daddy said, when we were in boot camp, do you remember this and this and this? The guy said, where do you want to go? He said, Tyndall Air Force Base in Panama City and lose my records. He said, sign the papers. He said, get out of my office and don't come back. Your daddy kept yep. receipts. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's course, fantastic. Daddy, yeah, daddy was probably just as guilty as this guy, but this guy was a, a little more risky position than he was. Yeah. Yeah. All about position and who had the upper hand at the moment. Amen. I love it. What was so? What did what was growing up there like? Being in a in a beach town area. Oh, it was beautiful. I ne we didn't go to the beach that much. We would go to the beach out at Tyndall, or um, down in St. Andrews or something. But Daddy, uh, we had a little sixteen foot boat. I know. Well, Daddy built him a, a, a cabin cruiser with hand tools. 18 foot with a destroyer bow on this thing. It was beautiful. The only thing is he couldn't build a cabin. It looked like a cardboard box on top of this beautiful hull. <laughs> and uh, we would go skiing every weekend. Uh, once a month, they would send a plane to Bangor, Maine, and everybody would trick contribute money, and they would bring back lobsters. And we had lobster... Uh, Parties out at the you know beach. Daddy came in a little tipsy one day, and hit a channel marker with the cabin cruiser. He sunk the channel marker. He didn't sink the boat. And uh, he drove, came on in back to the uh, place where we were docking and uh, walked in and traded it on a sixteen foot Chris craft. He said, "This boat is too big. I'll get in trouble with it." I mean, and. Now, the crazy thing is, my daddy died in 92. In 94, 95, we were in Panama City for a vacation visiting, and I was driving down on the beach road in town mm -hmm. and looked out on the bay, and I said, you've got to be kidding me. I got closer to it. I even pulled off the road and walked on the beach and looked. It was my father's boat. Now, he built this boat when I was in sixth grade. I'm, uh, at that point, I'm five years after, no, I'm more than that, many years after the uh, time I retired from football. And it was sitting in the boat. It still ran. I mean, oh he gosh. put seven coats of uh, fiberglass on that boat. Wow. And uh, it was, I mean, you could, we would take that thing out in the guff, uh, and didn't matter what the waves were. We just 
wrote on it. It was beautiful. Um, but just kind of got out of the habit of going and doing. And so. Yeah. Such is life. Yep. So how did you, like high school, obviously, obviously you must have been a really good football player. How, how did you find your way to Auburn from high school? Well, uh, I was, you know, I had 19 offers on scholarship, including mm-hmm. all four of the military academies. As a matter of fact, uh, before I, when I decided to go to Auburn, a week and a half later, the uh, Democratic uh, representative for North Florida called me up and said, I have a, an appointment for the, go- at, uh, for the Air Force Academy for you. And I went, oh, man. He said, when do you want to sign it? I said, I've already told Auburn I'm coming. He said, son, this is the Air Force Academy. I said, I gave him a word. And so he said, are you sure? I said, yes, sir. I, I'm a, I regret it, but I'm got to. The next guy he called, took it, went to the academy, became a pilot, and was shot down in Vietnam. Wow. And, uh, but I decided I was... I never thought I was, you know, really anything great until I was uh, a junior and, and started. Everybody started coming talk to me. Uh, University of Florida and Florida State wanted me very badly. Matter of fact, they were real upset that I didn't stay in the state. Mm-hmm. The only head, head coach at that time that uh, you know acted like a human was Charlie Tate at Miami, and uh, wound up playing for him in the World Football League. Uh-huh. But. Uh, it was, you know, I started, I went to Auburn, my own, my first visit, and walked around, and people will, you know, say, hey, how you doing? Hey, what you doing? What's up? And I was not used to this because they don't do that in Panama City a whole bunch. Uh, this is kind of like, uh, you're bothering me, son, go away. Yeah. So we, um, I went there, and they were playing Baylor. And Baylor was leaving 10 to nothing with about, oh, two minutes to go, and we scored. Now, the stadium was just a horseshoe back then, and it wasn't completely full, but everybody in that stadium was yelling, go for two, go for two, for go for two. And I'm going, what's the difference between 10-6, 10-7, 10-8? You lose. Wow. Yeah. Well, they went for two and made it. And – after the game, I told Coach Jordan and uh, Coach Atkins, the guy who recruited me, I said, uh, I'm coming to Auburn. He said, well, you may want to make some of it. I said, I'm not making any other visits. Matter of fact, I made Georgia. Um, as I say, Florida and Florida State, very mad at me. And Alabama, uh, we were playing Dothan, and I told them that I wasn't coming for a visit that week. And I forget who it was to sit down, but uh, – he had me up against my, our school bus. We were playing Dothan that week, and with uh, Tommy Wade played, and uh, he kept he was he had me up against the the bus, and we well, never going to be this year. And I said, "I'm going there." I said, "Y'all had plenty of time to come get me. Evidently, y'all really didn't want me that bad. So have have a nice day." I finally got on the bus. And uh, went back. Tommy Wade went to Alabama and had you know a great career. And I went to Auburn and I and I enjoyed it. I went to I wanted to be um, a defensive end because I was an all state defensive end in, in, in Florida when my my senior year. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, Dave Gasquire was the other defensive end. He's from Pensacola. And he wound up playing and starting for the University of Florida, which we beat. We didn't beat him my freshman year. We beat him three years in a row. We even beat him with John Reese and, and, and uh, Carlos Alvarez. And we beat wow. him like a drum that week. Uh, but uh, it was just, you know, I, I, when I went there, I, I just felt at home. Mm. It was 
you know, I was comfortable. Yeah. People talk, people talk to you. You know, most places you go to, people don't talk to you. They just kind of brush you up. You're in my way. I'm get out of here. You know, but people was, hey, how you doing? And I wasn't even with the guy that was supposed to be taking me around. Evidently, he took the money and went and got drunk that night. So uh, I was just walking around campus. And uh, but it was, you know, I had I had a lot of fun playing with a guy named George Atkins. He's the guy that recruited me. And he recruited Northwest Florida. He and my father got to be such good friends that he would come down on a Friday and recruit the high school games. Right. Didn't come to my game, but he stayed at, my, at our house. And about, you know, every Thursday or Friday and Saturday, uh, when they Auburn wasn't playing, they um, would sit out in the backyard after everybody had gone to sleep, drinking what uh, my daddy used to call an LTCO. It's called the Long Tall Cool. It was uh, vodka and tang. And they were called orangutans. Ooh, and it was it was a one foot glass, about three inches in diameter. And they would have a ball with it. But uh I mean we got my senior year, Pat and Terry were sophomores. Okay. And uh when it's it was amazing. We had some good quarter quarterbacks. We had Jim Kelly from, uh, well, not, but from Montgomery, played at Rob, uh, Jess Lanier with the Spigner brothers, Jimmy and Danny Spigner. Yeah. And uh, we just, you know, it was, they were good, but when Pat walked in the huddle, it was the difference between a general and a private giving you orders. Wow. Yeah. Even as Tom, so. So, like, even as, like, a sophomore, Pat Sullivan was like that? Yeah, he was a sophomore, and Terry was a sophomore. Wow. And uh, when they were freshmen, for practice one day, Tom Banks and I were sitting out on the, the steps, and there was some freshman fraternity boys walking along. They had their little beanies on. So Tom and I decided we wanted some beanies, and we sent Pat over there to get them. <laughs> and Pat goes over there, you know, Guys, I'm sorry, I don't want to do this, but those two guys over there said, I got to come and get your beanies. Well, we looked up and up the road, about a half a block up the road, with several of their um, upperclassmen, and they were on a dead run towards Pat. Oh, no. Tom, Tom and I took off across the street and threw body blocks on them and knocked every one of them down. We told them, y'all never get to touch Pat. Nobody gets to touch Pat. His wife has to get permission to touch Pat. And we threw the beaties to him and said, y'all go on. And they just, they went off. But Hey, protecting your quarterback. Oh, yeah. And the first game, <laughs> we walked in and we played in Wake Forest. And we held him, got the ball on the 30-yard line. Pat walked into the huddle and turned around and looked at Terry and says, take off and run as fast and as far as you can on one. Snapped the ball. He dropped back. He threw the pass. As Terry was prone going across the goal line, the ball went off the tip of his fingers. Oh, wow. And I turned and looked at Tom Banks and said, we're going to have some fun this year. <laughs> and it was. It, uh, Terry was unbelievable. Uh, the spring before that, he was – they were timeless in the 50s. Yeah. And uh, I looked at him before he ran. He was running against Albert Bressler, who at the time was the sprint champion in the state of Alabama. I said, how fast are you? He said, I've never run wide open. And in the 50-yard dash, he pulled up the last five yards and still beat Bressler a step and a half. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And Bressler was grease lightning. Wow. Uh, I mean, it was just – Terry, he had no fear. He'd put his head in anywhere, and that's one of the things that uh, caused his demise. 
Yeah. And that was a sad, yeah. was a sad time. I mean, yeah. I've, I saw him several times after that. I mean, you know, by the time I moved to Birmingham in the seventies and he could talk to you for an hour, mm -hmm. turn around. And it's like he hadn't seen you in two months. The concussion. That's crazy. Was awful. That's uh, crazy. Yep. Yeah. That was, I mean, yeah, that was super recent, just earlier this year. Yep. Yeah. Matter of fact, we played in the Blue Bonnet Bowl when, we was, when I was a senior, and he got knocked out on the opening kickoff and was on the ground for 10 minutes. Two series later, he was put back in the game. I told him to get off the field. Yeah. Uh, they didn't like it, but I said, he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know who he is. Yeah. All right. It was just um, – did he stay in? Nope. I mean, he came. Okay. I think they sent him back in later in the game. But uh, it was – just that's when I really started seeing how cold a business football is. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's – I love the game. I would go play it again. I do – I've had four knee operations. I've had – Seven joint replacement, three knees, two hips, and two shoulders. Probably need another shoulder, but I'm 76 years old. I'm not getting another one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Yeah. 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 But we just, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I played with Connie Fredericks, who was an excellent punter, excellent uh, receiver. And, um, Mickey Zofko, Wallace Clark. Played with Freddie Hyatt when I was a freshman, and yeah. he's he was crazy. And it was I don't know what all you want, but yeah. it was crazy. It was a it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, and you mentioned the statute of limitations had not uh, ended, you know, passed on all of them yet, though. I got you. I got <laughs> you. Well, you mentioned like business of football, so like. Post Auburn, you you got drafted, right? Yeah, I was a seventh round draft choice by the Buffalo Bills. What was what was what was draft like? Because I know it was what nineteen seventy. Is that right? Yeah. What what was the what was a draft process like in nineteen seventy compared to what this craziness is today? It was still about as crazy, but it wasn't quite as pumped up, and everybody didn't go to the yeah. thing. Uh, I got a call and they said, uh, we want you to come play. And I said, okay. Uh, I went up there. The prices uh, for athletes were a whole lot less up then than they were now. <laughs> My first contract was 15 grand. Wow. Houston for how many, for how many years? How many years was it? That was my rookie year. It got so a little bit one. better, a couple of, you know, a few thousand better for the next two, but I wasn't with Buffalo all that time because I, I started my first year as a rookie. Then I tore a knee up, my right knee up mm -hmm. um, in Atlanta trying to come back and, and, and throw a block on a guy. And in next year in New Orleans, I got clipped after I ran past the guy. He clipped me. Oh. And uh, – it was, you know, not a lot of fun. That, what I say, it was a, it's a business, and it's very cold. Yeah. I, I came up by the, one of the shots they gave me for pain uh, about well, seven, six, seven o'clock one evening. And I looked up in the doorway, and there's the GM for the bills. He's not, he didn't come in my room. Yeah. He's standing in the door. He said, how you doing? I said, well, I'm hurting, but they're going to bring me another pill or shot something. And he said, oh, by the way, you've been picked up by the Houston Oilers. So do not come back to our facilities. And walked off. Told. Wow. I mean, they, you, if When you are useful, they love you. When you're not useful, they don't care. And that's what is, the cold 
are in fact. What what does that do to someone like you know you, you play football your whole life you reach the you reach the pinnacle of it does it does it diminish what you do does it make you love it less what, what what's the feeling there? No, you. I didn't love it less. I I still love it, and I'd go back and do it again. Uh, and I'm not sure I'd change all all that I did, but it's. It, it makes you understand when you go out in the real world, and this that is the real world. Uh, you're just the same way. I mean, I go get a job at a, at, uh, at a store or do or selling cars or something like that. As long as I can produce, great. When you can't produce, you're gone. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, it's just, that's just the way, you know, it is. Uh, the world today yells, oh, that's not fair, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. Life is not fair. That's right. Life is really not fair. I mean, you've got to pick between good and evil in life. you got to pick between God and the devil. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time, but I you know, finally figured out which one I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, in 1999, I had five bypasses. Wow. And I've had seven since, since then. The Lord's keeping me around for something. And when I, he, you know, I finally figure out what he wants, I'll do it. I'm going to be gone, but I'm going to be gone to a better place. That's right. And I feel sorry for these people, I, you know, I love the NFL. I mean, it paid me some money. It still paid me money retirement. Yes. But the people who run it are only looking for the easy way out because they go along with this woke stuff and this kneel for the anthem. Uh -uh. Right. You stand for the anthem, you kneel to pray. Yes, sir. And um, it's just something that, you know, I do. And it's, you know, but that's the world. So That's right. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't, you know, they've got to learn. Hopefully they'll learn. Uh, and I don't wish them anything bad. I want everybody to do well. Absolutely. The only problem is everybody can't do well. <laughs> that is the problem, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Let's let's talk about let's talk about that rookie year because I mean Buffalo, I forget the name of the league they had been playing in, but nineteen seventy was the first year that they were in the National Football League, right? Yeah, they were the AFL. Okay, it was the AFL. Yeah. There was a there was a particular running back on that team who didn't didn't quite play maybe the whole season, but uh OJ Simpson was a teammate, right? Yes, he was. What, what's uh, your what's your best nineteen seventy OJ Simpson story? Uh, we ran a sweep to the right with me pulling around, mm -hmm. and they had a uh, uh, and I forget his name, but he played at the University of Florida, and we had faced each other all through our career. We were mm -hmm. both the same age, and. Uh, he came around and he got about a yard from Juice, and he ju Juice juked him, and he was laying on his back when I went by, going, "Ha ha!" Uh, Juice was, you know, he was a great running back. He uh, had thirteen flat feet. I mean, he had no arch, right? And but he could fly. He could be full speed in two steps. And he was very fast. That's unbelievable. And he had great moves. Uh, the my in seventy two, which would have been my third year. Um, that's when the uh, running back he really started becoming a running back because they changed coaches. Yeah, and they went from I want him to be a receiver to I want him to be a runner, which that's what she drafted him for. And right after that, he 
ran for 2,000 yards. Uh, he was, you know, it was the Express. And uh, another guy that played there was Al Cowley's. Oh, yeah. He's the guy that drove the Bronco. That's right. He's a lifelong friend of OJ's. Another Southern Cal guy. Yep. And Juice is the one that got him into Southern Cal. Got him a scholarship. Also really? helped get him, also helped get him drafted number one by the Bills. Really? Yeah. Now, funny thing with him, we're playing the Jets and Winston Hill, who is a great offensive tackle. Uh, that's who I was playing on. And he would drop back, and Winston would just put his arms around him and encircle him and just hold him. And he was just uh, – Al was ranting and raving with the officials. One, finally, one of the officials said, son, you got to understand this. That's Winston Hill. He doesn't have to hold you. And they just went off it. And Al just said, you're kidding. <laughs> but he did. Uh, the Jets were probably the best holding team in the league that you know those years. And I actually learned how to do it from watching their film. Wow. Because for the first seven games in my rookie year, I led the NFL in holding with seven. Really? So over the next uh, four and a half years that I played, I only got caught twice. Wow. And very simple. You turn your hands upside down, and you go into the body and under the shit, under the shoulder pads, and yeah. you pull them through you. Now, they may beat up your back, but they're not going anywhere. How, how, how hard is it to get in that position from that not point that of explosion? Is it? It's not hard to get there that quick. Uh, you all. It's all one movement. You have to make it one move, Kinda, yeah. or when you come up and make it, or when you drop back. When you go in, you almost got to let them get almost on you, and then you go in because if you try to do it too far away, they'll throw you on the ground because those folks are huge. Yeah, played with a guy wow. named Jim Dunaway from Ole Miss. He had been drafted by uh, the Bills, oh, 71, I believe. And uh, the Minnesota wanted him to draft him first round. He said, no, I'm going over there in the Bills. He got drafted in the third round. But uh, when I was in Buffalo, when I was in Auburn, my senior year, I'm watching the Jets and the Bills play. Yeah. Now, Jim Dunaway was six foot four. About 340 pounds. Shoot. Had a nice belly on him. He raised horses and cattle in Mississippi. Wow. And he blocked the field goal and returned it 78 yards for a touchdown. He had been a fullback at Ole Miss. And he walked with his head down, just kind of shuffled along. My funniest thing about Jim was my rookie year, we're going we're going one on one. I said okay, and he takes about thirty seconds to get down in the stance. And I'm thinking I'm going to kill this old man. I get dropped back and exploded into him. And the next thing I knew, I'm sitting on the blocking dummy, and I'm looking around. And the coach comes right up. What you did wrong? What you did wrong? I said, I don't know. He said you didn't move your feet. I said, Coach, my feet weren't on the ground. He picked me up, gave me back, <laughs> set me down. Uh, about a week later, we were doing five on five, and my leg got caught in, and I was fixing to lose the knee. And I screamed. And the next thing I know, Jim Dunaway's got me over here. The line is there. And I'm just looking at him, and he's just relaxed. And all of a sudden, I said, Jim? You can turn me loose now, but thank you. <laughs> he just picked me up and carried me. Unbelievable he was, strength. Buffalo and, and the the seven sixties had unbelievable teams. They had uh, Paul McGuire, who was the kicker. Yeah. Uh, who was crazy. Uh, Dunaway, Tom Sustek, 
who was from LA or from the Louisiana State, not no Louisiana Tech, and oh uh, Ron McDowell, who we called yeah. Twinkle Toe. He was about the same size as Dunaway. Yeah. If you could get within six inches of him, and you couldn't hit him. Let's see. Matter, he had a, a strained arch, and the only way I, the only time I ever hit him, I stepped on his foot first, and he screamed, and I hit him. I wanted to call off practice and go take everybody and buy a beer. Man, it, yeah, I was look, I was, I was looking over here at some of these players on, uh, on that '70s roster. Now, this is from. ProFootballReference.com. So hopefully it's all correct. But it looks like uh, your quarterback was also a rookie that year, Dennis Shaw. Yeah, Dennis, Dennis Shaw. Okay. Threw a lot of interceptions, but hey, Peyton yeah. Manning did the same thing his rookie year. Well, yeah. Go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and then I see OJ only played in eight games, but I mean, he was carrying the ball. Four, four and a half yards to carry, something like that. Yep. Uh, let's see. Who else we got? Marlon Briscoe. Okay. Yeah. Thousand yard Great receiver. 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 Yeah. And it wow. played quarterback a little bit. Wow. Yeah. Man. What was are you are you still like you mentioned still being a fan? Do you have a do you have a team that you pull for? Uh the Bills. Yeah, I was gonna ask, like, is it is it that obvious it's still the Bills? Yeah. Um, I played – well, Houston is no longer Houston. They are Tennessee Titans. Right. Uh, their, their owner uh, – let's put it this way. He's the only Indian I've ever met that I don't like. The Titans I, owner? That's some Indian blood. I mean, uh, he, uh, he and his coach, Sid Gilman, you ever uh, – Shook hands with a guy that felt like a wet noodle. <laughs> that was his handshake. Uh, and he didn't care what you did or how you did it. Uh, if he didn't like you, you were gone. Wow. Man. And they got rid of him and brought in another coach. And, uh, oh, what well, it's dead coming. Oh, you wore the hat, the foot, baseball, cowboy hat. I'm sorry. Let's see. Bum Phillips. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, Bum did a little bit better than uh, than Sid did. Yeah. Sid had been the coach at uh, San Diego before he got, you know, he got fired from there and, and came to Buffalo as the GM. And then uh, he had Bill Peterson, who had come from Florida State, and Sid still wanted to coach. Okay. He didn't help Sid. He didn't help uh, Bill Peterson out a whole bunch. <laughs> Man. So how, how long did the how long did your NFL career last? Three years. Three years. What'd you do after that? I went to the World Football League for two years at uh, Jacksonville first. And okay. then the San and uh San Antonio, we had a good ball club. It was just the owners uh, didn't know how to run a, a league. The guy in Jacksonville named Fran Monaco, he owned Monaco Research Lab. Yeah. And he wanted to hold for the kicker during during practice and take uh, whirlpools with us afterwards. I went, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> he – uh. He was saying when we folded that first year, they went. The IRS went through his wife's desk and found eight thousand dollars in an envelope in her desk. Nobody knew where it went, and we hadn't been paid in three weeks. He got upset because a bunch of us, you know, went to other places. I fin finished that year up with the Hawaiians, and okay. we made the uh, playoffs in. Uh, Orlando and in Birmingham, I think, got beat by Birmingham. And I think they won the league that year. Next year, uh, San Antonio picked me up and uh, went out there. I love San Antonio. Love, love the country. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. People were awesome. Uh, the hill country is, is, is as beautiful as you can get. And the fans were absolutely unbelievable. 
Yeah. We uh, had several guys that I, you know knew of or played with in in, in the Bills uh, with and in pros. Uh, and it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. I apologize. I'm. I've got this is what a World Football League looked like. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Off the, the last game, I took it off the field because they were selling everything. What? So was this from like your last game or, or what? My, my last year uh, in 1975. Wow. That Wait, was, was the last it? game of the World Football League. Oh, that, so that's the ball from the last game ever yeah. of that league. Yeah, that was in the game when I took it off wow. the field. Wow, you got quite a piece of memorabilia there. I do, and I've had a lot of folks, you know, that <laughs> wanted to get from it as I was taking it off the field, saying, y'all ain't getting it. <laughs> y'all have a nice day. You ain't getting it. That's it. Man. Uh, it was a lot. Uh, you know, it was – it. Uh, that was probably the best overall team I played with. Lonnie yeah. Warwick was uh, had been the linebacker for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Billy Hobbs had played at New Orleans, both of those. Uh, and Rick Cash, who looked like um, – oh. Who? Yeah, looked like Elliot Gould. <laughs> I mean, look, could have been a carbon copy, except he was about six inches taller. What? Wow. Okay. And they, those were my roommates when I came out there. Yeah. Uh, and there were a lot of times that uh, we left training camp after the meeting, went down to San Antonio, and we were never late getting back. <laughs> It was, it was a good a little over an hour's drive down to yeah. there from, but it was um, the country. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Out there. Yeah, yeah. So what what did you end up doing? Like that sounds like what is that like five six years of 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 pro ball? What what did you do after? I sold cars. I wound up working for Lowe's for sixteen years. Until uh, I had to retire because I tripped over a uh, lift forklift on a one of the machines. Yeah, and uh, it was you know I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't have to wear. I hate ties. I literally <laughs> Same. absolutely hate Same. ties. Can't stand it. I I actually went after jobs that I didn't have to wear a tie. I hear that. And uh, but I, I just, it was just something, you know, didn't want to do. Yeah. No, I totally get it. Look at me. I'm sitting here on a podcast in a Bass Pro shirt. I mean, well, I, I I understand you. I, I get it. You have to understand. Ties were invented by women to get back at us because we invented the bra. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it, it always works for me. That's funny. I'm going to use that. That's hilarious. Man. So, um, let me make this. I, I wanted to ask about kind of two current day things. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to pro. When are the Buffalo Bills going to get this Super Bowl? Uh, they're going to have to have a better offensive line, a running game. Yeah. And they're going to have, you know, they got, they better find some receivers. Yeah. Losing digs. I mean, it seems like there, I don't know what was going on there. Seems like he wanted out. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, replacing him is crazy. Yeah. It's the same in any, any, any group that you play football with. Mm -hmm. Two things you better be very good at. You better have a very good offensive line and you better have a very good defensive line. Because if you don't, you can get close. Right. But then you're going to run up against a team that's got them both. And they slap you on the rear end and lay you down. 
Yeah. I'm looking at the – I was trying to look at some of this roster. I can't remember the name of that receiver that they – that they just drafted, but he was he was hysterical in his uh introduction to the media or whatever. But yeah, it's I mean Josh Allen is an unbelievable quarterback. I just hope they give him enough weapons. Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman? Yeah, the one from Florida State. Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> was he was an absolute hoot when he got drafted. Well, Dawson oh, Knox seems like a good he, tight end. I hope he's as good as he thinks he is. But uh, <laughs> everybody's good before they uh, snap on the helmet. That's it. That's it. Man, that's it's it's fun watching them. Like I like I don't really have an NFL team. Like like I just like I just like watching the game. Um, years ago when I was at Alabama, like I started at the University of Alabama. Uh, shortly after D'Amico Ryan's played there. And mm-hmm. so when D'Amico got drafted and, you know, with playing in the middle of that Texans defense, I was like, I'll just, I'll be a Texans fan. They had, they had him, they had Antoine Caldwell on the offensive line, uh, loved Antoine Caldwell, huge personality. And so I was like, I'll just be a Texans fan. And, and then I didn't, you know, D'Amico moves on, retires, whatever, and I haven't really had a team since. Now D'Amico's the head coach, and I'm like, I don't want to seem like a bandwagon fan because the Houston Texans trajectory right now just keeps growing. Like they kind of seem like that one of those next teams that's going to be really, really good. They drafted well. CJ Stroud was an unbelievable quarterback in as a rookie. And D'Amico seems just all class and really seems like a guy who is going to do this for a really long time at that level. Um, like when coach Saban retired, you know, people were like, Let, let's go get D'Amico. And it's like, that's an NFL guy. I don't think that's a college guy. Nobody in college right now is going to be, I, I don't think is going to be able to do what Saban did and what coach, have done in the past for the simple reason of this we're going to give you money regardless yeah i'm sorry uh we got 15 dollars a month uh the only good thing back about that is back then beer was 25 cents <laughs> if, if 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 NIL had existed at, uh, in college athletics in the mid to late 1960s, what who would you have wanted an NIL deal from at the time? I love uh, I You know, I, I didn't know anything about all the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I had an uncle who graduated from law school at Alabama, offered to pay my way through law school if I just go there. And I didn't, you know, so I'm going to Auburn. Uh, I like the University of Georgia. Yeah. I, when Charlie Tate was there, I liked the University of Miami. Mm. I am not a Florida or a Florida State fan. Uh, nothing, you know, don't wish me any bad luck. Sure. Just don't wish me luck at all. Uh, They're just kind of there, yeah. <laughs> and the only other pro team I would like I grew up a Packers fan with Jerry Kramer. Yeah. That guy was phenomenal to me. As a kid, he fell in a well and had a two-foot splinter in his leg that they didn't find for like 12 years when he was with the Packers. They thought he had cancer. They go and cut it out. And it's a splinter, a two-foot splinter. I'm going, y'all didn't have x-rays back then or what? <laughs> Oh, that's but this awful. was uh, in Saban, uh, Bear, yeah, Boot, Butts, Smart. All of them have that. They'll take yours and beat theirs, and then take theirs and beat you. That's it. Because they're going to work them 
and make sure that they know exactly what to do in every situation. Because if you don't, you can get games turn on free play. Somebody slips. Quarterback throws a long bomb. Running through, and the, and the white—I mean, the running back doesn't have the ball right, and somebody sticks an arm out, fumbles. Receiver short arms it instead of bringing his arms out, catching with his hands, he catches it close to his body. That's where most of the uh, drops occur from. Right. You don't you, you put your arm out there, you catch the ball. If you touch it, you catch it. That's it. Period. In the court. That's it. What do you what do you think about uh Hugh Freeze finally getting this Auburn job? What do you what do you think about him and the job he's gonna do? I hope he does great. Uh and I know that he had been left very little by the previous two administrations. And uh, I know he did very good at Georgia State. I think that was where he was, and it's Ole Miss. Liberty. Yeah, Liberty. That's right, Liberty. I'm sorry. You're good. I've taken a, a few hits to the helmet. Uh, it's funny. I took the NFL concussion syndrome. I'm part of it. They said, well, you're not crazy enough. For you know, for us to give you a, you know a bunch of money, and they said, but you can take this test next year. And I said, well, how much is the test? They said thirty five hundred dollars. I said, I'm not that stupid or that crazy. But I, I know Pat had problems with it when he was my colon. Um, guys that I know and played with, Larry Willingham, right now, can't tell you. Me, his name was sometimes. Jeez. And it was just, and Willie didn't play, but in, in the pros, but a year or two years. But he did like we were all taught at that age. You lead with your forehead and you put it right in the middle of their body. And I guarantee you, Willie and him would knock your knickers loose. Uh, Tell you about that long pass, hit pass the first pass. Uh, Willingham was the return. And I told him, I said, I don't want to have to drive the ball 100 yards. And he caught the ball on the 10 yard line and got to the 30 and almost broke it. He came over and said, Is that good? I said, Yeah, freshman, that's good. <laughs> Man. So do you think, do you think the league is, I mean, it's 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 a different game now in terms of protections and and safety and that kind of thing. Are, are they are they doing it right? Are they doing a pretty good job? Are they is there room for improvement? What do you think? Well, with the rules the way they are now, when allowing holding by the offensive lineman, <laughs> uh, yeah, you just got to have somebody that wants to. An offensive lineman has got to be in control fury. He can't get mad and go crazy like a defensive lineman can. Because if he breaks down, somebody's in the backfield, that plays over. A defensive lineman can go berserk. Somebody will cut him down, but eventually, you know, he's going to he's going to cause a lot of damage. You, you a, a defensive lineman has has they can be wild. But an offensive lineman can't no matter how bad and how much you hate it. <laughs> there are ways to get back at defensive linemen. Uh, played with a guy uh, against a guy named Bill Costin in Miami when uh, we were both rookies. Yeah. Costin was about six foot four, about two, 325 pounds, had meat hooks for hands, and he loved to head slap. First time I went against him, he had slapped me so hard I turned directly around and was back in front. <laughs> After the play was over, I said, understand. You hit me like that again, and I'm going to tear one of your knees up. He said, you can't do this. I said, watch me. Watch me. Day, I saw that hand back. I hit him about two inches above the knee. And he went down. He said, 
you ain't kidding, are you? I said, nope, you ain't hitting me like that. He didn't hit me that kid, you woman. <laughs> Man. I want to end on two things, and I'm trying to decide which one first. I'll go with the high school route. Um, how cool seeing your son coach Clay Chalkville and be part of that state championship this past year. Oh, I'm extremely proud. Uh, the kids love him. Um, I think he's done a heck of a job. Uh, he tried kind of funny. He got, he got me out there helping him coach the freshman or the junior varsity team. In the first play that I was out there, I made a mistake, and I know it. I didn't get far enough away from the line of scrimmage. And they oh, no. away, and I wound up with my rear end. He was panicking about it. But I got up. I, I, he said, oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just leave me alone. It was my own stupid way. I, I, did, I got in the way. But you're able – when I was his age and young, younger, I had three kids. Back then, you made $3,800, $4,000 coaching. Yeah. I couldn't do that. Right. I had to um, put a roof over the head and food on and clothes on the kids. That's it. He has been able to build himself up, learn, because he had to learn yeah. uh, that you can't do everything your way. You have to do it the way everybody else, you know, the man in charge says. And he's done that. Uh, and I'm extremely proud of him. Um, and I hope he has a great career. Uh, I know he wants to be a head coach, but that happens, it happens. But you... The main thing is you teach the kids how to play the game and not just play in the game, but you teach them what it takes to play the game. You have to teach them that, and he does, it, it's watching them. They get, they believe in him. Uh, they, they stand up for him. Every, every school, he's, you know, I've seen him in. The kids stand up for him. Uh, but he's, you know, I used to sell him when I, I was the ages were reversed. I said, "Hey, I'm throwing this stuff out, this knowledge out to you in a five gallon bucket. If you ain't got but a five one gallon bucket, you better be very fast, or you're going to miss it. And that's sure. what you have to learn. And I can't, you can't learn when you want to. If I'm the new guy coming out here wanting to play." I have to pick it up to get at least even, if not ahead, of what the coach is talking. Yeah, and that's what he, he teaches. I mean, the kids love him. They have great um, camaraderie, and they're a, a tightness. So they're a unit. There's some kids out there that got no chance of ever playing, but the way he deals with them and works with them. They yeah. give every effort they've got. That's it. That's it. Let's end on this. We're, we're recording this, obviously, in summer, so it's not the NFL season yet, but it's never too early for a fun prediction. I mean, I think it's why they put those futures out there that you can bet on and whatnot. But, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but who, who, do you, who would be your prediction right now to play for the Super Bowl or play in the Super Bowl and who would win? Pick, pick with your head, not your heart. I think I, I got mine. I don't like them, but San Francisco's got a good ball club. Ooh, yeah. And I honestly don't think Kansas City has got the pieces, all the pieces anymore. Um, that AFC pick is tough. It is. Um, and, you know, it's, it, it, it goes 
it swings it's like a pendulum it goes back and forth the N- NFC is great and you know it goes back to the middle and then the AFC and then yeah, yes, uh, and it's who stays healthy all the way that's it uh, hold on I got something I want to show you go for it <laughs> Can you see your thing? I can see names. I can't yep. see the t- the little shield thing in the middle. Players of – move it a little closer or move it toward you a little bit. Okay. I see this, you. My goodness. Look at, look at that me. hair. Look at that hair. Yeah. I actually had hair back then. All right. <laughs> There's Marlon Briscoe. Yeah. Howard Kendig. Now, Howard was a, a Cajun. And he got the bubble in the white. He was a tackle, left tackle, and he was also the long snapper. Okay. Well, for some reason, Buffalo got mad at him and traded him to Miami. Oh, gosh. The year they went 17 and 0. 1972. Wow. Yeah. Mercury uh, Morris will never let us forget that either. That's true. <laughs> This guy, Paul McGuire, okay, Costa. at one time, I mean, Paul Costa, I'm sorry. Paul was at one time a, a preacher over in uh, Shades Valley. Oh, how about that? And at Buffalo, he had one of the biggest mouths, in fact, worst mouths you ever heard of. And David Moss, yeah. and that's Juice. Use. And let's see over here. Yeah. There's Al Cowles. How about that? Man. And, That's uh, cool. Yeah. We've had that for years. I love it. So so San Francisco out of the NFC for you. Who's who's coming out of the AFC? I'm kind of torn. Josh says Baltimore, but uh, I don't. Um, They're one of the ones that I'm torn with. Yeah. Uh, if Miami can stay healthy, Miami. Okay. Okay. I'll give you. I'll, all right. So you've got. I'm gonna write them down so I can remember. That would be fun. Miami versus San Francisco. I was torn, and I so I was torn between two in each uh, conference. Out of the NFC, uh, I was torn between, honestly, between Green Bay Packers and Detroit. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to lean Green Bay. Uh, I like the addition of Josh Jacobs, if, if he can stay good. <laughs> um, and then out of the AFC, like Josh, I, I I did like the Ravens, but ultimately I went Texans. So I've got a Packers Texans Super Bowl. Yeah, that's been worked uh, real well. I, I'd love to see the pack back in. If the Bills can't get, see the pack, uh, because I just remember watching them and Jim Taylor and, and Star, uh, and you know. Like I say, Lombardi had rules. If you were, if we had a two o'clock meeting and you show up at two o'clock, you're 15 minutes late. That's it. Wow. And he would find you. He oh found, uh, find one of the wide receivers uh, twice for being late to a meeting. And uh, the, uh, after the, after the second time finding, he says, listen, the next time you late, it's going to be $1,000. And if you find somebody that's worth being $1,000 late for, you come get me. I'll go with you. Well, you know, it's, I, I love the game. I love I love playing baseball and basketball, running track. Uh, matter of fact, I held a long time uh, track record. At Jinx Junior High School in Panama City, 
and 110 yard really? hurdles. Really? Um, yeah. Wow. And that was kind. Of, and that was kind of hard for you know six. I went from the ninth grade to the tenth grade from five nine to six four. Jump! Whoa! Wow! And went up and went all the way up to about two ten. Wow! That was quite a spurt. Yep. Crazy! My mother to... always bought our clothes at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's. Uh, I thank you. I enjoyed this. Yeah, no, I appreciate you doing it. This was fun. This was fun to talk about some of the some some ball from 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 before I got to really know it and uh you know be around for it. So this this has been fun and I really appreciate you taking the time to do it. Uh, no problem anytime. Have a good one. You too. Thank <laughs> you.